Well, praise the Lord. We are now at the last part of our uh, five-part series uh, entitled Keys to a, a Prosperous New Year. And uh, I hope that you are indeed learning a lot uh, this past few weeks, okay, about uh, prosperity, about uh, finances in general, about stewardship, okay. You know, each one of us must decide how are we going to live our lives in relation to money. If there's one area in our lives where we can really be diverted, you know, where we can really be distracted from God's purpose for our lives, it's in the area of money, okay? In fact, when Jesus said, uh, you cannot serve two masters, he never said, you know, God and then Satan. He said, God and money. It's always about material things, and a lot of Christians really get distracted and they lose their way because they begin to love money rather than just use money for God's kingdom. Amen? When you begin to love money, when you begin to focus your eyes and you begin to set your heart on gaining as much money as you can in this life, well, you're setting yourself up for a lot of heartache. God wants us to focus on Him and to live our lives based on His Word. And in the area of finances, I hope that you will make the choice. You will make the right choice. Amen? I pray that you would decide that the, the basis of how you're going to relate with money will be based on his word, his truth, rather than on the philosophies of this world. Amen? Okay? You need to decide on that because if you don't, right, sooner or later, the temptation will come. Sooner or later, your life will reach a fork road, so to speak. And then you will have to decide whether you'll give more priority to worldly wealth, to money, or whether you will seek God and obey His will, right? So the, 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 the time to decide on that is not when you actually are in that kind of situation. The time to decide on that is right now, even though you may not be rich yet, okay? As I look around, I see that not many of you are rich yet, amen? Can you say to the person beside you, I think you are not yet rich, but soon you will be, okay? <laughs> soon you will be. Well, anyway, this is the last principle now, and I hope that you will really listen and, and uh, allow the Spirit of God to renew your mind because I believe this principle, this last one, the fifth one, would really be uh, so helpful for us in terms of our attitudes, okay, toward money and especially toward giving also. Now, uh, Pastor Gina did mention that planning Okay, as I said last week, should come before giving. Meaning to say, don't just give, uh, you know, spontaneously uh, when the giving moment comes. Instead, make a choice on how you will honor God in the area of finances. Okay, now as a, as a believer in the Lord, as a pastor, okay, I believe that the minimum uh, level of disciplined giving is what I call the tithe. The Bible calls the tithe, which is ten percent. Now, some people might say, well, pastor, are you legalistic? Are you saying that we should give 10%? Well, my answer is no. Okay? You can actually give 20%. It's okay. All right. No one is reacting to that. Okay? You can give 30%, 40 Anyway, here's my point. Uh, you know, being disciplined in the area of giving, that's, where, that's when God really blesses you because you are... Uh, you know, planning or thinking ahead. You're not just, you know, giving at the spur of the moment. Whenever someone is important to you, you don't just think about, for example, uh, his or her birthday right on the very day itself, right? If you, if you care for someone, even before the birthday comes, you're already thinking about that person or what you're going to give to that person, amen? If the holidays are coming, if Christmas time is coming, you just don't think about giving a gift on the 24th, right? You think about... Giving to that person way ahead, that shows that you really value that person. Can I hear an amen? amen? And that's true even when we give to the Lord. When you just give to God at the spur of the moment, you know, based on how you feel at that moment, you're not really valuing God. But if you really value Him and His kingdom and His purpose, you need to plan these things. You need to say, God, I want to honor you in the area of the, my finances by giving you this much. Now, it's up to you how you decide on this. Now, for me, you may say, well, you know, Pastor, I, I don't think I can give 10% yet. I don't have that faith. Well, it's okay. Start where you are. 
Okay? Start with 0.5%. Okay? But it should be something regular. It should be something as part of your discipline lifestyle. Okay? It should not be something like you just you know, think about uh, grabbing something inside your uh, pockets there and giving it to the, to the offering basket. You need to decide, okay, here's, here's where I am spiritually. I can only give maybe uh, 0.001% right now. Well, okay, start there. Be consistent. Amen? Okay, I, I hope you would grow, of course. Amen? Because that's the will of God. We are to grow in the area of giving. Well, I, I used to just give spontaneously when I was a young believer in the Lord. Amen? And then I grew and I understood about tithing and then I started giving my tithe. But I didn't stop there. I continued growing. And so, beyond my tithe, I give offerings. Beyond my tithe, I give help to other people. Beyond my tithe, I give in other areas, okay? So, I'm not limited by tithing. Tithing is just my beginning point, amen? But you need to grow in this area. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm really belaboring this point, because I think some of us are still being, you know, uh, held as a prisoner in the area of, of uh, finances because we're still not able to exercise enough faith, you know, to be disciplined in the way we give. Not every, kind of, not every kind of giving actually receives a blessing from the Lord. But when we give to God, all right, based on our faith, based on our, on our uh, trust in Him because we are surrendering everything to Him. And when we give uh, in terms of planned giving, that's when God's blessing begins to pour out in our lives. I know some people who would give a huge amount, okay? They would give, let's say, you know, 10000 to 20000 or whatever. But God is not pleased. You know what? You know why? Because it's not the amount. Are you listening? It's the attitude of your heart. Remember, you know, I mean, a person can give 20,000, 50,000, but his heart is not right before God. So God is not pleased with that. It's not the amount. Okay? It's your heart attitude, and God is looking at your heart whenever you give. Can I hear an amen here? Amen. All right. Now, this, this kind of giving... Uh, sorry about that. It should say actually planned giving, not planning giving, okay? Planned giving, okay? Uh, results in God's blessings. And what, what a wonderful thing it is to, to know that in the Bible, God makes a promise to us. That when we are faithful in the area of finances, when we use the worldly wealth that God entrusts to us, when we use that for purposes that are in accordance with His will, you know, there's a promise in the Bible that God will bless us. And that's what we're going to look at today. Amen? All right? Now, the thing is we need to ask ourselves, uh, ourselves the question, what is my motive when I give? What, what is really motivating me when I give? Now, what is motivating you when you give? Now, when you say to me, well, I give because according to God's word, there's going to be a return. Now, let me tell you right now, there's really nothing wrong with that. Okay, because indeed God makes a promise in that area. So when you give and you say, I give because I, I'm expecting God to, to just bless me when I give, there's nothing wrong with that. Amen? I'm not saying you're committing any kind of sin. But if that's the only reason why you give, are you listening? If the only reason why you give is that you're making some kind of transaction with God, you're saying, okay, God, I'm going to give. And you said in your word, you know, just, you know there's going to be a return. If that's the only motivation you have, because I think you need to search your heart. Because that is not really ultimately the motive of a person who understands, you know, the principles uh, in God's word concerning giving. Because you've got to go beyond that. Yes, there, is, there are promises in the Bible about God blessing us when we give faithfully. But that should not be the only motivation. Amen. All right. And that's why this last passage that we're going to talk about today, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 15, which actually finishes off the two chapters that we've been studying. Praise the Lord. We finally made it, right? We started in chapter 8, verse 1, and we're now finishing in chapter 9. By the way, I made a mistake the last time. I did mention, I said, that uh, the last passage is from verse 6 to verse 24. And I realize that's a mistake. It's only up to verse 15. Okay? So 6 to 15. Anyway, this, this basically summarizes everything that we've covered so far. And uh, as we read this passage, you know, we're going to see, we're going to discover that, yes, we can be motivated by our desire, okay, to, to prosper. Okay? We give because we believe this is the key to prosperity, and yes, I agree, that's very true. Giving is really the key to prosperity, amen? 
And yes, it's also true when we give, we actually help other people. Amen? We are actually helping in, in terms of, you know, uh, blessing other people. That's also true. But there's something, you know, that we need to see about our giving that goes beyond this, you know, concerns or these motivations. So let's dive in into our text and let's start off with the principle that Paul shares with us. A principle that each one of us should really take heart. Because this is applicable in every area of our lives, not just in the area of finances. Okay? He says this. Remember this. So tell the person beside you, you know, remember this. Okay? So what are you supposed to do when, God, when the word of God says remember this? Well, you're supposed to remember it, right? <laughs> so if I were you, try to memorize it. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Now, this is a kingdom principle. Amen? This is true in every area of our lives. And by the way, as I speak about giving, please don't misunderstand. I just don't mean money. Amen? Because we can give of our time. Amen? We can give of our talents. Okay? As well as we can give from our treasures. Okay? So when we give, we give any aspect of our lives. So that's all about giving anyway. So here's the principle. All right? That when we you know, a plant or sow, okay, something, all right, we are going to reap something. The, 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 the illustration is actually agricultural in nature. And, and you know what? Please listen to me. If you want to understand kingdom principles, you have to understand it not in terms of technology. You have to understand it in terms of agriculture. And we are not an agricultural kind of society, amen? That's our problem, right? I mean, nobody's a farmer. Here. Any, farmer. Anybody who's, who's a farmer here? All right, no one, right? Maybe you're into agriculture. I don't know. Uh, how many have a green thumb? You know what a green thumb is? A green thumb. Anybody? You plant something and it actually grows. Because I don't have a green thumb. When I plant something, it dies the following day. So I'm not, I don't have a green thumb. But I think I understand a little bit about uh, agriculture, okay? But there are two things about this uh, statement here that Paul is saying. First one is that it has to do with the idea of later. Say that with me, later. So when you plant something, you don't immediately see the results. It comes later. That's the principle in, in agriculture, right? When you plant something, you know, like for example, a seed doesn't become a tree the following day. You have to wait, okay? So in the same way, when you talk about spiritual things, you do something today, you don't expect immediate results. You wait. Amen? That's true for every area of our lives. When I do something today, when I serve God today, I may not reap something immediately. I may have to wait for quite some time, right, before I reap anything. Amen? You understand that? So that's true also in finances. Okay? If I give to the Lord now, I won't expect God to just reward me today, you know, or maybe tomorrow. It may come much later on, right? It may even come at a much, much later period, okay? But nevertheless, it would come. That's the, the point. It would come. Now, secondly, secondly uh, this metaphor is telling us or teaching us that aside from later, it could also be greater. Right? When I plant a seed, I don't expect just, you know, just because I planted one seed doesn't mean I will reap one fruit. Amen? When I plant one seed, it can actually result in a tree that bears multiple fruits. So in the same way, this is a kingdom principle. What I do now in the kingdom of God may actually result in something that multiplies later on. Far greater than what I did. Okay? And this can actually work, uh, work out negatively, you know. <laughs> you do something wrong and it can actually come, you know, it would reap, uh, you would reap something later, much greater. Okay? So later, greater, right? Remember that. Later, greater. Okay, that's a kingdom principle, later, greater, okay? So basically, this principle is telling us that when we are faithful in the area of giving, okay, a principle begins to be at work in our lives, which means something is going to happen later on, okay, and it may be far greater than what we initially planted. And that's good news, amen? That's how God operates with us. That's how God uh, relates with us, okay, using that uh, metaphor in agriculture. Now, so let's proceed because here is where, you know, a lot of people, when they read this, this passage, you know, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, they, they, they don't fully understand. But let's look at this passage. Each man, so you say that with me, each person. 
So when, I, when the Bible says each man, it follows every woman is included. Amen? So don't think that the Bible is just, you know, biased toward men, okay? It's each man, each person, okay, uh, should give what he has decided in his heart. Listen carefully here. This is, this is important. When God writes something in his word, okay, it is an expectation not just for believers, it's for everybody. Amen? The only problem is that when you have not just surrendered your life to the Lord, you don't care about what God expects from you. And the Bible calls that sin. <laughs> but for believers, it's different because we listen to God. So when God says each man should give, what do we conclude? Each man should give. Amen. Wow, you, you, are you following me, all right? Because someone may say, well, I don't like to give. Well, you're in a very difficult situation because the Bible says each one, all right, each man should give. Now, what will be the basis? Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. That's why I'm saying it must be planned giving. You have decided this in your heart ahead of time. You have made up your mind and you have concluded and said, okay, this is how far I can go. Okay, my faith only goes this far. I think I can only give 5%. All right, start where you are. Okay, decide that. Okay, don't think about how much you're going to give. Right at the very moment that the, 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 the giving basket is being passed. All right, don't, don't just think about giving like, oh, 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 I have to give. Ooh, ooh. I wonder how much money I have. <laughs> so you decide ahead of time. This is how much I'm going to give to the Lord, okay? Not reluctantly. In other words, you know, it's, okay, Lord, here it is, you know. Or under compulsion. Oh, here. <laughs> so when we give, like what I'm saying, God is looking at our hearts. Would you say that to the person beside you? God is looking at your heart. What is your attitude? So that's the point. Okay, for God, what does it say? For God loves who? A cheerful giver. And I told you last week, the word cheerful comes from the Greek, Greek word hilarion, which actually is the root word for hilarious. And hilarious is more than just being happy and having a smile, right? Hilarious is just, you're just so cheerful and so excited about the prospect of giving, all right? So when I say, we're going to give to the Lord, look at the person beside you and say, we're going to give to the Lord. You see, you're not hilarious. I told you. Because when we give to the Lord, okay, when, when somebody comes to you and says, uh, let's go to, uh, you know, to the Mall of Asia. You know, say, yes, yes, you're hilarious, right? Yes, Mall of Asia, all right? Oh, let's go to, you know, whatever park there in Santa Rosa. What, what is the park there in Santa Rosa? Uh, enchanted, okay? So if somebody comes, you know, I'm going to treat you, huh? Let's go. See, he's hilarious. See? When, when, now when I say, give to the Lord. Look, he's not hilarious, right? So there's the big difference there. Now, God loves a cheerful giver, meaning to say that if you're excited, you have decided beforehand how much you're going to give, you're excited about it, and you're going to follow through on it, the Bible says God loves that kind of person. Amen? And how many of you know that when God says he loves you, it, he, it also means he will bless you? Right? It just follows he will bless you, right? So if you're giving today or if you've been giving so far with a heart that says, well, okay, you know, I'm going to give. This is my last money, Lord. You're taking everything from me. So, you know, if you give like that, let me tell you something. God is not loving that kind of giving. God is not pleased with that kind of giving. Amen? This may be hard for you, but that's true. That's what the Bible says. Amen? Now, and this is what I like, because this verse, you should memorize this verse, okay? Maybe you've memorized John 3.16, so you add this verse to your lineup of memorized verses, okay? <laughs> God, okay, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to, uh, verse 8 says, and God is able. Now, interestingly, in the Greek word order, it says, able is God. That's what it says in the original. Able is God. So, so Paul actually starts with the word able. In English, of course, that's weird. You know, if you, if you say able is God, you know, it doesn't sound right. That's why in English it is translated, God is able. But the fact that it comes first, Paul is basically emphasizing the truth here. 
that if you really want to experience real prosperity in this life, it won't come through your connections. It won't come through your abilities. It will only come through God. Amen? God is the one who's able. Now, people don't understand this. They think it's up to you, you know, working so hard. You don't sleep. You know, you just <coughs> try to get connected with the right kinds of people. And, you know, and you try to, you know, uh, hope that you can just, you know, probably make it in the corporate world, etc. Let me tell you, okay, this may be a shock to some of you. Whatever you do, all right, no matter how hard you try, if God is not there with you, you will fail. Amen? But if God is with you, you may be the least of all people. You may not have so much to, to, to be proud of, right? You may not have a, a, you know, a, a very high degree or you may not be so intelligent. But let me tell you, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen? Amen. God can prosper anyone who puts his trust in him. Okay? So it's not about hard work. Now, of course, you, have to, you, you need to work hard. I'm not saying don't work hard, right? But it's not up to you. It's up to God. And I'm deeply encouraged about that. Amen? And some of you, you have had your, your you know, experiences uh, in your life that maybe you, you feel like, uh, you know, the world is against you. But let me tell you something. If God is for you, I don't care if the world is against you. You will make it. Amen? So never look down at yourself. Now, maybe some of you are not too intelligent. Let me see some hands here. Okay? I mean, you're not summa cum laude or anything like that. I mean, you raise up your hands. I mean, I'm just kind of normal, okay? All right? Okay, good. I mean, for me, I'm not even normal. <laughs> I mean, seriously, okay? When I was in high school, you know, whenever I, I get a grade of 76, I feel like I'm a scholar, you know? Seriously. I'm really not that uh, bright, okay? But you see, with God, nothing is impossible, amen? Uh, right now, I, I'm now studying in, in my doctoral program. I'm now, you know, I'm about to get my doctorate soon. All of that is through scholarships, Okay? And uh, it's by God's grace. Amen. <laughs> and so, really, think about this very carefully. God is able. You say that with me. God is able. God is able. Right. To make all grace abound to you. And that's, that's very important because everything is by grace. All right? Everything is by grace. And then he said, so that, now, I want you to count how many times the word all is mentioned. Right? So that in all things... At all times, having all that you need, all right? Isn't that great? Amen? Isn't that a fantastic promise from God's word? He, he, look at what he's saying. In all things, so when God prospers you, when you put your trust in God and God prospers you, let me, let me tell you something very, very encouraging. He does not just prosper you in the area of money. In all things, Amen? I mean, what's the use of having lots of money if you're lying in an ICU bed, you know, with all the tubes in your nose? What's the use of the money, right? What, what's the use of being so rich and then you have to pay the doctors because they don't know what's wrong with you, right? Or what's the use of having lots of money when you cannot sleep? What's the use of having lots of money when your home is just so full of chaos and everybody's fighting everybody and, there's, and there, there are no good relationships at home? What's the use of money then, Right? So when God blesses, he doesn't just bless you in the area of money. He blesses you in every area of your life. Amen? And that's how God prospers people. Look, at all times, not just sometime. You no, know, like what people would say, you know, life is like a wheel, you know. Sometimes you're up there, sometimes you're down here, you know. But with God, it's not like that. With God, at all times. Okay? And then he says, having all that you need. So God will take care of your needs. Amen? But then he says, you know, beyond that, he said, you will abound in every good work. And that's where the difference begins to appear. Between those that God prospers and those who simply just pros prosper in the eyes of this world. Because when somebody becomes rich in this world, they're thinking, boy, I'm rich. So what do I do? Well, I'll just enjoy myself. Right? But a true believer in the Lord, whom God prospers, thinks of it in a different way. He says to himself, boy, I'm rich. Therefore, I can do more good for the kingdom of God. And that's what differentiates a person who's just focused on worldly wealth and a person who only sees worldly wealth as something to be used. 
Don't love money, love God. Because when you love money, you will just hurt yourself in the end. So God says to you, don't worry about anything. When you trust in me, I'll take care of everything. Amen? All right? So now, as we continue on, he says, as it is written. So this is in the Bible. He has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor. And then he says, his righteousness endures forever. So this reflects God's righteousness. What is God's righteousness? He gives to you more than you can ever, you know, feel like you deserve. That is righteousness. God is righteous in terms of not just, you know, blessing people. He is righteous in terms of providing for your every need. Amen? And blessing you more than your needs. Now, look at this. Now, now when you see the word now like that, okay, that means that here's what Paul is saying. I've told you this, and this is true, and, it, and it, it's important for you to believe this. But then he says, now. So what he's saying is that more than that, there is something else I want you to know. Amen? So whenever you're reading your Bible and you see the word now, you should stop. and say, now. I don't mean to say now, the end is near, and so on. You know, when he says now, he means by that that there is something far more important that, is, that he is about to reveal to us. All right? So he says, now, he who supplies seed to the sower, and that is us, whenever we give, we are sowing, right? So he's the one who's supplying. Amen. Don't you know this, all right? Every time you give something to the Lord, to the Lord's work, it is not you who's actually just giving. It is God giving you the grace to give. He gives you the money to give. He gives you the will to give. He gives you the desire to give. He gives you everything so that you can give. It all comes from God, all right? So he says, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, Okay, we'll also supply and increase your store of seed. That's a promise. Amen? So it's going to increase your store of seed. Why? And we'll enlarge, he said, the harvest of your righteousness. In other words, he wants you to be like him. Very generous. Okay? Righteousness is not just about, you know, not smoking, not drinking, you know, avoiding sin, you know. Righteousness also has to do with doing good, just like God. Being rich and doing good to people, right? God is like that. Amen? God is like that. He just keeps on blessing people even though they don't deserve it. Do you know that? Right? God is like that. And I have good news for you. God wants you to be like him. Amen? And that's the reason why he saved you. That's the reason why you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. So that you can become like him. I'm excited about that. How many of you are excited about that? Right? Praise the Lord. Okay? So whenever you're going through some kind of difficulty, remember God is just shaping your heart. Amen? He's just transforming you to be like Him. And that's exciting, all right? So He's going to increase your store of seed. Now think about that. God doesn't just simply meet your needs. He's going to give you a greater capacity, okay, to be able to bless other people and other organizations. You know what? I don't know if you've noticed this, but... Uh, we have a whiteboard downstairs or along the stairs. Anyway, you've seen that, right? And for many months now, every time you see a figure there, it's more like bad news, really. Amen? Now, actually, to tell you frankly, it's more good news now because I'm really greatly encouraged by what is happening in our giving in this church ever since, ever since we started our series. Amen? Can you just give a cup, cup offering to the Lord? That's true. Because when we started this series, boy, you know, we had a very huge backlog, okay? And I was praying and asking, oh, God, have mercy upon us. And I'm preparing myself to go to Muntinlupa, you know, to, to believe it, okay? Because it was a huge amount. I'm just waiting for the lawyer to just write me and, says, and say, you know, please respond immediately or something like that. But thanks be to God. Ever since we started this series, you know what, ha what has happened? The giving has increased. Amen? And the figures there are going down. Hallelujah. Okay, it's not going down. Amen? Now, I hope we can maintain that. But here's my dream. Here's my dream. And I believe it's, it's consistent with God's promise to us. My dream is that someday when you see a figure there, it won't represent a backlog. It would represent a surplus. 
Amen. I hope someday, you know, when the day comes, because we're faithful to the Lord, God just complete, just fulfills His promise to us. The day will come and we would say, not so much like, you know, when are we go, where, where are we going to get the money? No, it will be a different kind of you know, question. Like, where can we give the money? My goodness, we have so much money. Where can we give it? Right? Maybe we'll hear of an organization that is helping some out-of-school youth or maybe an organization, a ministry that's helping uh, prostitutes, you know, uh, to get out of that profession. And we'll say, you know what? We think what you're doing is really from God. So here's 100000 Do more of that, of that. And they would say, well, you know, do you want us to pay this back? No need. They have too much. <laughs> Amen? Because <laughs> I really believe with all my heart, God desires the people of God to be generous. It is not God's will for us to be always crying and saying, Oh, God, where are we going to get the money? We're doomed. We'll never make it. You know, I don't believe that is God's will for us. Amen? How many of you say amen to that? That's not God's will. This is God's will. God's will for us is that someday the things that we really want to do for the kingdom of God, we'll be able to do it. Amen? Come on, believe, that, believe this with me. Right? Say amen. amen. All right. Also for you, I do believe that someday you will reach a point in your life, if you're faithful to God, you will reach a point in your life and you, and you will say, you know what? I really want to help. I really want to do this. And you won't be thinking twice about it. Not, not like right now. Right now when, you know, when there's a, a giving a time, you would say to yourself, I wish I could give more. But this is it. This is all I can give. If I give more, I'll die. But one day, and I believe it will happen if you're faithful to God, you will reach a day when you say, you know what? I'd like to give to that. You know what? I'd like to give to that. I'd like to give to this. I'd like to give to that. I, wanna, I, wanna, I want God's work to just prosper. Amen? And you won't even just feel it because God just keeps on increasing the store of seed in your life. Amen? How many of you are dreaming about that? Say, okay, five of you. That's great. Okay. No, it's just kidding. You know, many, many of us are dreaming about that. Now, he's going to enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. And that's a promise from the Lord. God wants you and me, okay, to be rich in good works. Can I hear an amen? amen? Believe this, okay? Believe this with all your heart. And that's the reason why God wants you to prosper, by the way. God doesn't want you to prosper simply to have lots of money for yourself. God wants you to prosper the way he wants you to prosper so that you can be rich in helping other people. Amen? All right. Okay. Verse 11. You will be made rich. Didn't I say that? I just said that, right? You will be made rich in how many ways? Really? In every way so that you can be generous. How many occasions? Really? Can you read that again? How many times? Every occasion. And then, you know, here's, here's the wonderful thing. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Now, wait a second. Up to this point, he's been telling us, you know what? If you practice planned giving, if you are just cheerful with your giving, God is going to bless you. And so far, we like it. Amen? But then it doesn't just stop right there and says, but wait a second. I want you to understand something very important. That when you give, your ultimate motive should not just be to prosper, even though that is true. Are you, are you listening? Our desire is not simply so that we would prosper or even, even if you know, we can help more people. That's not even the, the highest goal. So there is something far more important than all of this. He said, uh, Paul says, I want you to understand that in terms of giving, the most important thing is not your prosperity. The most important thing is the glory of God. The most important thing is worship. Amen? He said, when we give, it will result in what? In thanksgiving to God. I know this personally. I know this personally. There have been times in my life that I've been praying to God, asking him for help because I couldn't provide for my son's 
uh, education or maybe I, I don't have enough money to pay our bills. And then I'll cry out to God and say, oh, God, have mercy upon me. You know, I know that you will never forsake the righteous and all of that. And I'll quote that to the Lord and I'll pray and I'll cry. And then suddenly, okay, someone would email me or call me, you know, out of the blue. And this person would say, Pastor Bo, the Lord touched me. I don't know what. I was just praying and God reminded me of your name. <laughs> so I want you to know that there is a check waiting for you. And then when I go and take the check, I'll be surprised because the amount in the check is more than sufficient to pay for my needs. But you know what the result is? The result is that I don't go to the person and then start worshiping the person. <laughs> the result is that I begin to just see how wonderful God is. And I begin to worship God with all my heart. I begin to say, oh God, you're so good. You know, and then my faith just increases, you know, 10 times. Because now I know the Lord will never leave me nor forsake me. Amen? Whenever we give, we actually create a lot of thanksgiving and worship going back to God. That's what, that's what giving is all about. It's all about God. Amen? Whenever you give, you ought to be thinking, I hope that this giving will just result in thanksgiving and worship to my God. You don't give because, you know, I want to be rich. Even though it's true, there's a promise in the Bible about that, right? When you give, God says, yes, I will prosper you. Well, thank you, Lord. But that is not the ultimate reason why you give. You give because you want God to be glorified in your life. You give because you want the Lord and his work to prosper. That's why you give. And when you give like that, you'll be set free. And God is just also free to bless you. With every blessing that he has planned for your life. Amen. Now, look at this. This service, he's talking to the Corinthians. He's, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people. That is true. But is also overflowing in many what? Expressions of thanks to God. So Paul is now shifting his emphasis. He's saying up to verse 9, he's saying, look, you know, God is going to bless you. I promise you that. Well, everybody's just excited about it. Yes, amen, right? But then God, then, then God just inspires Paul to shift, to shift his emphasis and say, by the way, okay, it's not about your prosperity. Amen? Giving and all of this is not about your prosperity. It's about God's glory. Ultimately, it's not about you. It's not even about the people that you help. It's about God's glory. So you see, giving, really, is worship. Amen? Giving is worship. So look at this. In verse 13, he says, Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, what will happen? Men will what? Men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession. Okay? Your confession of what? Your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. Whenever we show everyone else around us that money is not our God, that God is our God. Whenever we live our lives not focused on material things, whenever we live our lives and say, and we say to, uh, by our actions, we say, well, okay, material things are just material things, okay? And I will just use them, okay, for God's purpose. Whenever we do that, we begin to show a distinction in our lives that others would, be, would look and say, you know, how come you're like that? Because everyone else in the world lives self-centered lives. Everyone else around you, your friends, they live their lives based on a principle like, okay, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be with Oprah and the queen, you know. I'm just going to be the best, all right. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to go to New York, Canada, or whatever, okay. I'm going to build myself a big house. They're all thinking like that. And when they see someone who has a different kind of ambition in life, when they see you and, you and you are showing by your actions and decisions that there is something far more important in life than just accumulating a lot of wealth, God is far more important in life. You see, that's a very powerful testimony because it's not natural. Amen. <laughs> It's not normal, okay? Because people would say, why are you like that? Why are, remember, I don't know if this has happened to you. When a person or a friend found out that you are practicing tithing, what were their reaction? I remember, you know, when, I, when my, my family found out that I was tithing, immediately there was a negative reaction. What? Why are you doing that, right? 
I mean, you know, you know, that pastor or that leader or that organization is just taking away your money and blah, 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 and so forth. So it's very hard to explain, amen? Because when you are practicing that kind of discipline in your life, it doesn't look logical, okay? Why would you do that? In fact, for other people, it sounds like tax. Amen? It really sounds like tax. If, if you're not a believer and you hear about tithing, you say, you frown, right? You, you begin to show like, tithing? Hmm. I will just give what I like to give <laughs> whenever I want to give it, right? See, people won't understand. But once you begin to practice these principles that I've been teaching to you in this series, and God begins to bless you, you know, people around you would say, you know, you're different. <laughs> What's with you? <laughs> okay? And that is a wonderful thing. Ultimately, it goes back to God. Ultimately, God is glorified when they see that your prosperity is not something that is destroying your life. Your prosperity allows you to bless more and more people. And, and it doesn't distract you at all from your worship to God. I really pray, I really pray for everybody to prosper. Amen? Amen. Raise up your hands if you want to prosper in this life. If you don't want to raise, okay, if you don't want to prosper, I respect that. And I'm just so sad for you. But I, 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 you know, I want to prosper, not for the purpose of just being rich. I want to prosper so that I may do more for God and his kingdom and glorify his name even more. Amen? That's my motivation. And that should be our motivation. Now, the last two verses, again, just reinforces this truth. And in their prayers for you, Paul says, their hearts will go out to you. So there will be a fellowship, a strong bond between those that you're helping. And you who are trying to help them. He says, because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Because they will just be able to see that God is at work in your life. And then in verse 15, he just ends with this statement. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Now what is he talking about? Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Well, let me tell you what. Paul is not referring to what he gave or what the Corinthians will give to the, to the saints in Jerusalem. He's talking about the very privilege of giving. It is actually a gift from God that I can give. Because when I begin to understand it, when I give, there is so much more that is happening beyond my giving. I mean, God is exalted. God is glorified. People are brought to God. There's a lot of things that is going on. And it's in my simple act of obedience to God results in such a wonderful, wonderful blessing. And God is glorified. So Paul says in the end, my goodness, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. <laughs> now, this is the turning point in every person's heart. When you begin to see giving not as something that is negative, like something is being taken away from you. When you begin to see giving as a privilege, as an honor, as something that is truly wonderful, then that is the time that you are set free. And you begin to say, praise God. Thank you, Lord. I love to give. Because that's when God begins to open the windows of heaven in your life. And he begins to pour out blessings to you because now you're free from the love of money. Amen? You know what, my friends? Because of the increase in giving lately, you know, the church is now able to focus more on reaching out. The church is now able to focus more on doing the things that God wants us to do. Because you see, when you're worried about finances, it's like you cannot think of anything else, right? Sometimes, I don't know about you, maybe you're able to sleep well at night. You know, I'm, I envy you. But sometimes I cannot sleep because I'm thinking, what if the following Sunday this center is closed down because we cannot use it anymore? Now, you don't worry about that, right? Amen? See, you're not worrying about it, right? But I, I, I'm thinking about that. But you know what? Since these past few weeks when, when God has been answering my pray our prayers, you have been faithful to the Lord. Amen? And because of that, the church is now able to do more for the kingdom of God. Now, listen to this principle. I want to say this to you. Okay, here's the principle. Your generosity, okay, 
must ultimately be for God's glory and not just for your prosperity. That's the principle. 